اطلع بأملك بطاعتك مستوفزا and then I changed and then I changed and going I died he didn't say I changed he says I died the whole point is towards that poem and it says what then why do I fear death يا رب لا نشيء ثاني رجع بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم that's good You guys I have to push you guys a little bit and then you start picking up on things. I was going to speak about death. If you listen and you listen with that intention for the sake of Huck and then go. Instead of low low uh, ah something. And try. Then you work it. You work that gauge properly. Yes, that saying of Hazrat Imamulana, hundreds of years before, is Monkey Darwin is saying with his theory of evolution, saying mankind coming from monkeys. Let's put it like that simply. And he had said hundreds of years before that, I was a mineral. I died and I became a vegetable. I was a vegetable and I died and I became an animal. I was an animal and I died and I became a human. I'm a human and I died and I became higher than the human, higher than the angels. So what fear do I have of dying? What is this fear? What is this fear of dying? Prophet says, die before you die. This hadith, of course, the Wahhabis, they hate it. Anything that the Ahli Tasawuf we're taking, they say this is bid'ah, this is uh, weak, this is made up. doesn't matter the end is coming too so this is very important for the people who are looking for ihsan living for ihsan and dying for ihsan people today thinking that the rukuns In that hadith of Jibra'i alayhi salam, Iman, that is everything. It is not. Islam, meaning the actions, it is everything. It is not. Ihsan is the last and is the highest. And when Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam came to speak to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam as if questioning him, quizzing him. Tell me, what is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? And when he left, none of the Sahabi Kiram knew that he was Hazrat Jibreel because he came in the form of a man with a turban, of course, with a full beard, with a juba, with a cane, not with the other wrong uh, clothes that you say this is Islamic. And the Prophet asked his Sahabi, he says, do you know who that was? He said, you know better. Allah and his Prophet knows better. And he says, that is Jibrail, and he has come to teach us our religion. So Ihsan, what is Ihsan? To worship Allah as if you see him. And if you do not see him, to know that Allah sees you. Ihsan is perfection. There are many, many meanings. The meanings of, of the Quran, the meanings of our Lord, the meanings of our Prophet, it is endless. But we may say the meaning of Ihsan, it is perfection, it is beautiful, it is the, the most important thing, it is the soul. People are running after, just worshipping, going up and down. But they don't have any beautiful characteristics. Because when you know that Allah is looking at you, you're going to be very careful. If you know... A camera is looking at you. Suddenly you're going to... You know someone is looking at you, you get nervous a little bit. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at us. Never not looking. When he stops looking, that's when we completely cease to exist. If Allah looks, his beloveds are going to look. The Prophet will look at his nation. We are not those Ahli Bidat that they want to believe that Shaitan is more powerful than the Prophet. Hasha. 
They say shaitan is everywhere, but we say the Prophet ﷺ, he is hazir. He is also everywhere. And he's also giving us a warning. Now, they say, stop Allah. Only Allah is everywhere. So if we do not have this taqwa to know that Allah is looking at us and we're just going up and down once you finish doing that and you're doing that really for other people to look at you then you your ego will be free to do anything that they like because you say I've already done my prayers so I can do as I like there are many that they do their prayers the circle around the Kaaba they do as they like as the ego wants when bombs are dropping down on Muslims and non-Muslim school children would go against their parents, go against the government to say this is wrong, stop this. All they're saying is to stop, stop this violence. Our Muslim brothers and sisters in Muslim lands were busy worshipping so much. At their graduation, they are dancing. This is not spirituality and this is not complete, the religion. You are studying so much, you are learning. Worshipping and you are learning. But it is not giving you that ihsan, it is not giving you that ahlak, it is not giving you that adab. It's finished too. So now, what we are looking for is for the 70,000 veils that is between us and Allah, for that to drop, for that to die. And if that doesn't die, we are not going to return. So Hazrat Maulana is saying, you must change, you must die. Other beliefs, they are thinking that you die and you become something else, you die and your body becomes something else. And it is not that. You can do that a billion times. But if your spirit is not free from those 70,000 veils, it will still be there. Whether you are black or you are white, whether you are animal or whether you are insect, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it is still there. And our Shaykh is teaching us how daily, how to understand first that false self that you have, that you are worshipping, that has to finish. And if you don't die before you die, it's going to be a big problem. In that grave and in other alams on Judgment Day, because you're still holding on to your existence, you say, me, I exist. Only Allah exists. So Hazrat Mawlana is teaching, explaining. He's not just talking about love all the time. Well, you're looking at his sohbats and even the Masnawi. So many times, majority of the time, he's just waking up to make us realize that we have a spirit, that we have a value. Then to turn that value, to return that value to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many times he's talking about the false self, all the examples that he's speaking of, wrong ones, bad examples, evil ones. He's always turning it around and says everything is there inside of you. We just finished the Karbala. And he, Hazrat Lari, is the one who said, Why are you cursing at Yazid? Why are you cursing at Shimir? Yazid is inside of you. Shimir is inside of you. And is this not what our Naqshbandi sheikhs are saying? If you don't think, as we read just yesterday from the Sohbet of our Shaykh, if you don't think, the Murid doesn't think that his ego is worse than the ego of Shaitan, worse than the ego of Abu Jahil, worse than the ego of Nemrut and Firaun, if he doesn't think like that, he will still be tricked by shaitan. Nice words.
How do you live that? How do you understand that? If you're not in the Jamaat, if you're not in the Sohbat, you will not. Goes in, goes out. Nice Sufi words. And this is what mankind always runs away from, the ego runs away from, a master. What master? My only master is Allah. SubhanAllah, what happened to the Prophet? My master is only the Prophet. What happened to the Sahabi Kiram? My master is only the Sahabi Kiram. What happened to the Awliya Tabi'in. Oh, never ending now. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, there is a knower above every knower who is a master that is assigned to you. Then that one is going to train you. Everybody knows in whatever organization, whatever capacity this dunya is, from schools to the military, yeah, the minister or the general is there. But you cannot say the general is training me. You cannot say the minister. You cannot even say the principal is training me. The teacher has to be there. We run away from teachers. We say we know how to read and write, but there is no guidance. Because the one who is guiding you will say, read this, don't read this. Write this, don't write this. And what is the Naqshbandi way of doing it? Read this. Read the book, your book. What, is, what did you write in your book today? What did you do today? They are busy writing. The angel on the right, they're busy writing the angel on the left. What did you write? Are you aware what you wrote? What is going to happen on Judgment Day? We're going to read Quran. We're going to read Hadith. We're going to read our own Kitab. What did you do? As Shaykh Afandi had said so many times, this, the day has 24 hours. And there are 24 drawers, he said. What did you fill it up with? And so many times he's saying, what did you send to your grave today? Question. Our sister saying, Oh, you're doing this on Saturday? I said, if Allah gives me life. If Allah is not taking my life away. It is not just saying, it is knowing that. We have been trained by our Shaykh and we are trying to get ready for that. If you are preparing, you're not going to be shocked later on. We're preparing for a long journey ahead. Not only we have to prepare, we have to find a guide. So say your question. Bismillah, you answered. What I, what I was going to ask, you answered it. Why are you going to ask? Bismillah, Rani. I was going to ask that these, um, the way I was going to ask before you fixed it, I was going to ask this changing that he's saying it's going from one state to another state. How do you make it so that you don't go back to that lower th that lower place that you came from, what makes that change permanent? But you said the correct word is dying. You have to die. All tariqat. There is no tariqat that says you don't have a share. Even if you're claiming that you're Uwaisi, there is still a share. There is still guidance that is there. You cannot just do whatever you like, however that you make it up. This is the thing. There is a peer. There is a sheikh, there is a person who makes zikr, but the murshid is something else. There is a peer, there is a sheikh, there is a ustaz, there is a um, alim. Everyone today, of course, they are running to become alim. What our sheikh is speaking. Oh, if we tell them what our sheikh is speaking, they are going to hate them. And our sheikh is saying, don't run so much for that kind of thing. Pull back because there is a lot of confusion. Not only there's a lot of confusion, you're running after that kind of knowledge, it will fill you up with such arrogance, such stubbornness, you think you're the only one who knows. Instead of you looking at your akhlaq, instead of you looking at your manners, you start arguing with everyone. You start cursing at everyone. You start thinking that you are the best, number one. It defeats the purpose now. But if you are constantly getting guidance, what you want to do is you are going to guide others, you're going to help. Shravani said in a sohbet yesterday, people are spreading Islam. He says, who told you to spread Islam? What kind of Islam you have that you are spreading? 
you understand? Well, Habibs are not going to understand. Stop the law, brother. Everyone has to understand. Prophet is saying one word, he goes, mm. but here we're talking about the quality. If you are not carrying the traditions properly, you are not representing Islam properly, what kind of Islam are you going to give to others? They have poisoned us. They say Islam spread through the sword, number one. Or number two, Islam is spread through businessmen. Traders. They want to trade, uh, they trade, and then afterwards, oh, come to Islam. And then that's it. That there is no planning, there is no importance. But this is the most important thing, that the Prophet ﷺ said to us, some sent his best emissaries to kings, that he sent his own uncle all the way to Central Asia, Ibn Abbas, that the Prophet ﷺ sent the Sahabi Kiram. Who are the Sahabi Kiram? Why were they chosen? Because they represent him. Who are they? They are the ones that the Prophet ﷺ says, they are like the stars. You take any one of them, they will lead you to hug to truth to me, he said. We are weak creatures. We make mistakes. We make mistakes over and over again. But what separates us, inshallah, Rahman? What separates us from shaitan? What separates shaitan from Hazrat Adam? They both made, I'm shy to say Hazrat Adam is a mistake, but they both make mistake. And this is the exact question that shaitan asked Hazrat Musa when he was going up to the mountain of Tur. And shaitan is saying, your Lord is not just. Astaghfirullah. Because he says he forgave Adam, but he did not forgive me. I did something. He told me to do something I didn't do. He told Adam salam, not to do something, and he did. He told Shaitan to bow down to Adam salam. He told Adam salam, not to eat from the forbidden fruit. He says, I didn't do, and he did the wrong thing. We both made mistake, but Allah forgave him and he didn't forgive me. So what is the difference now between shaitan and Hazrati Adam? Between shaitan and believers, us. We all make mistakes. He made mistake. What is the difference? Say. So, the believer acknowledges the wrong he did and makes tawbah to Allah. The believer acknowledges. The believer takes the guidance, takes the sohbet. Both made mistake. Hazrat Yadam says, forgive me, Ya Rabbi. Although he did not eat from the forbidden ones. Why did he eat that? He's stuck in his throat, let's say. He asked for forgiveness. When he spent 300 years, Yulia Allah is saying, standing on one foot in the mountain of Serendip, begging Allah for forgiveness. 300 years he stood crying, and from his tears that flows into the world, all the medicinal plants and all the herbs that is useful for mankind grew from the tears of our father, Adam alayhi salam. And he was crying for forgiveness. And he was crying to, not because he was removed from paradise, that he wants to return to paradise. He didn't cry because he was separated from his wife. Because Hazrat Yana was in Jeddah, and he was in Sri Lanka. He was crying because he was separated from Allah. And understand this. Yes, it came to him to ask for forgiveness. You think he didn't come to shaitan too to ask Allah for forgiveness? So shaitan became stubborn. He says, no, I didn't. I didn't make a mistake. I'm still right. Hazrat Adam says, 
I'm wrong, forgive me. He asked for forgiveness. Yet he did not feel the rahmat, the forgiveness coming to him until, until when? Until he asked forgiveness for the sake of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, for the sake of Muhammad ﷺ. And that is another, uh, another punch to arrogant people. They say, I ask forgiveness, you should forgive me. I'm sorry, so why are you not forgiving me? But the people of Iman knows that we ask everything, forgiveness too, for the sake of that one that Allah is saying, were it not for you, were it not for you, I would not have created the stars. The Holy Prophet ﷺ. Shaitan, now you see how many light years back he is, backward. So he asked Hazrat Musa, he's saying, Your Lord is not just because he forgave Adam, he didn't forgive me. It sounds like a sound argument. And so many are saying, Shaitan is the first one to use logical argument in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not submission, using his mind. Thinking he's so smart. There are many people, there are groups of people thinking they're so smart they can trap Allah that way. Do you understand? Musa alayhi salam, is the only Allah they're saying, our shaykhs are teaching, that the secret of shariat is given to him. And shariat is Logic too. It's not the only thing, but it is logic. There's a cause, there's an effect. And he says this, I cannot give answer. He went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying, Ya Rabbi, it is known to you. This Melun said this. Allah is saying, is that all, Ya Musa? Go down and say to him, and he knows this too. Say to him, your Lord is not most, is not unjust, is most just. Say to him, he knows where the grave of Adam salam, is. Go to his grave and make sujud, make sajda just one time. He will be forgiven. So there are conditions to forgiveness too. There are things that we have to do. And when shaitan heard that answer, he started laughing. He became more satanic, laughing at the answer that Allah is giving, smirking, laughing. He's saying, I didn't make sajda to him when he's alive. Now he wants me to make sajda to his dead bones. He became more stubborn. So you see, the rahmat of Allah in guidance, in knowing what to do next, in picking yourself up, in making certain actions when you do wrong actions, is always there. And deep inside we know, shaitan becomes more stubborn and still insists here, I did not do anything wrong. But the mu'min, the mu'min says, as in the ayat of Amana Rasul, that we're reciting every day. My murids should be memorizing that. These are the characteristics of believers. And he showed the characteristics of the believers, of the prophets, to those who are following the prophets. And it says they believe in the same thing. And they say, We hear and we obey. There is Sharia. Gufranaka. We hear and we obey. Most people saying, we hear and we obey, pay us. We hear and we obey, so we deserve paradise. That is Sharia. But this is not the faith of prophets and those who are following in their footsteps. They say, we hear and we obey, and whatever that we have done in that obedience is not good for nothing. They are not proud with that obedience. They're not proud of their worship or their, or their knowledge. They say, Kufranaka, forgive me, my Lord, Rabbana wa ilaykal masir. And 
to you is our return. So now death, that death, that changing. People with no brains and no hearts thinking they're losing themselves. But in reality, that death is to return to Allah, clean and pure. Guidance is important. How to take the next step, how to ask for forgiveness. The forgiveness is not just sitting and pulling your tasbih, saying Astaghfirullah. Allah is saying to Shaitan, it's not just saying Astaghfirullah anymore. Now you have to clean up your mess. As our Shaykh says so many times, if you do something wrong, run to do something right. So service is very important. So run to do something right. Then that time is easy for Allah to forgive. Because it shows now we are sincere. So yes, not to fall back to that. You are holding on tightly. If you don't hold on tightly, you'll never make any real progress anyway. You held on tightly before, you decide not to hold on to it. No guarantee. You change and you change, but you don't hold on anymore. You go back to it very easily. It all depends on how strong you hold on to. There are many that held on to the Prophet ﷺ, no. And then they change after that. Ibn Salaba, Salama, he held on to it. What's his name? He held on to it. He held on to the Prophet said to us, Salam. But after a while he says, I don't want to hold on so tightly. He lived in the masjid. He wasn't going out anywhere. Now his heart was pulling out, outside to do something. And the Prophet says, you don't want to be poor like your Prophet? And he says, oh, you know, I want to help people. I want to do this, I want to do that. Three times he asked, three times he asked. And the Prophet opened his hand. Although he knows that the Prophet doesn't want that for him. But he became really stubborn and he pushed for it. The dunya opened to him. And what happened when the dunya opened to him? Before he was staying 24 hours, now he started staying outside, stopping to serve the Prophet and to serve the Ummah. He started being outside, serving himself. Then he starts to come once a week, once a month. And the Prophet one day said, where is Ibn Salama? The rest of the Sahabis, they put their head down. They were too ashamed to say. He was busy. The sheriff and he says, it's like suddenly he had one sheep. Someone gave to him another sheep and he started breeding and he started having a lot of... So it's open. Now you see, now according to Tasawuf now, now be careful when wealth is given to you. It is a huge responsibility. You're not going to say, oh, mashallah, Allah bless me. What is this, prosperity gospel? There are so many who are thinking that. But it's a huge responsibility. And when the time came for zakat, he dared now to question. He dared to question the sahabis who came to me and said, the ayat came for zakat. And he says, what? Is he asking to be bribed? This story, not story, this reality, we've heard from our share so many times. And we've seen people who are amongst us. And they embody that. They hear the same story. They hear the same story. They pray behind the same sheikh. They ate with us. They cried with us. But they decided to let go. It happened during that time. It can happen now. They decide to let go. The car that you are driving for 40 years and you're handling it properly, one day you decide to just let it go. You say, 40 years I've driven. Why I have to hold on? Let me one time not drive the car holding on to that. It will crush you. It will destroy you. That is our ego. If we are not understanding what the ego is, it will do that. Don't let go. We're always saying, hold on tightly. Now you're going to surround yourself by things that makes you to hold on tightly. Shri Avani had said, now in the Jamaat, there is protection. The weakest one, the weakest sheep in the flock becomes very powerful. When there is a wolf coming, the whole flock will protect it. The strongest sheep without the flock 
will become the weakest. When he goes out, the wolf is going to catch. And there is an order for us. Be in Jamaat. So now when you are feeling weak and you're feeling that you're letting go, this is your will again. You want to let go? No, I don't want to let go. Then why are you letting go? Because I'm weak. Do you want more power to come to you? More strength from outside? Yes, they will send. It is according to us again. I'm weak. I can't afford to hold on. I'm letting go. Do you want others to be around you? No, I want to be by myself. Oh, finish. It's done. Again, it is according to us, our will. The small irada that Allah has given to us. May we return it to Allah, that irada, inshallah. May we return everything to Allah. May we return, inshallah, to Allah clean, the way that He has created us. May we hold on to our mashayikh, inshallah, dunya and ahirat, holding on to the Holy Prophet, alayhi to a and his teachings, inshallah. May Allah not abandon us. May we not abandon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His beloved ones. May we always be protected. May Allah bring down the zalim people. May Allah remove all the wrong leaders, inshallah, and replace them with the right ones. Forgive us, Ya Rabbi. Astaghfirullah. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam al-Fatiha. Amen.